the methods of scavengers, seismographers, and social actors. As researchers, restless travelers, and artistic life partners in crime and time, the eclectic practice of Tita Salina and Erwan Ahmad encompass a wide-ranging array of participatory and performative interventions, archival documentation works, lecture performances, and videos. Their projects are distinctive for excavating and investigating the borders and layers of place, space, time, and cultural practices. It was in Sharjah, in the United Arab Emirates in 2016, where I first encountered Tita's work, A Thousand and First Island, the most sustainable island in the archipelago, within the exhibition, The Time is Out of Joint, where we were both participating artists. Since then, I've had the good fortune to collaborate with Tita and Erwan on several occasions and observe their work and process at close quarters. At a regional scale, the couple's 10-year-long project, The Flame of the Pacific, which began in 2014, reflects on the geopolitical clashes sedimented in the Pacific Ring of Fire, where complex issues relating to humanity, migration, injustice, and ecology intersect. These projects have taken Tita and Erwan from their base in Jakarta to New Zealand, Taiwan, Japan, Korea, Russia, Chile, amongst others, and expanded field and geography where they function as social seismographers. They detect and constellate historical flows, coincidences, and resonances that vibrate across these seemingly disparate coordinates, producing situated knowledges and works reflexively distilling and folding the evidences and experiences they accumulate into the next chapters of this durational generative inquiry around the Pacific Rim. A parallel line of performances, the ongoing history series, was initiated by Erwan in 2014 to engage with unresolved episodes from Indonesia's post-colonial history. These are usually staged as date-specific live events, marking the anniversaries of political violence, disappearance, or significance. In these lecture performances, official state histories and regimes of truth are brought to friction against Erwan and Tita's own lived experiences, or the embodied knowledge of invited experts, or the collective memory of survivors. Here, the couple perform as social actors and citizen historians, and the spectators are cast as witnesses, rather than conventional audiences. In their fieldwork and research, Tita and Erwan employ a tactics of scavenging, collecting strands of hair from an elephant, old bones and stones, ancient coins, the discarded skin flakes of children, the disintegrating remains of a national propaganda film. They pay attention to latent narratives and potentialities that could be unlocked and weaved together alongside experiences, rumors, stories, and speculations from people they encounter. In their projects, violence is explored as a recurring theme, zigzagging between ancient and modern Indonesian history, Javanese mythologies and cultural signifiers, contemporary political statecraft and underground networks of extremism or terrorism, geological and man-made disasters, as well as the exploitative conditions of migrant labor. In their performances, they frequently zoom into the artifact, the fragment or the personal, before zooming out to the geographical, historical, political, social and spatial, navigating playfully between synchronic and dichronic notions of time. In doing so, Tita and Erwan contextualize, transform, and reinscribe their own memories and past experiences, as well as their present existence and the larger tropes in society, always with a poetics of humor, mischief, and subversion. Behind the skyscrapers, Jakarta faces an urgent ecological problem that weighs heavily on its responsibility as the center of government and business in Indonesia. 
For this reason, there have been plans to move the capital to Penajam, East Kalimantan. Perhaps Jakarta is just too old and tired. It is almost 500 years old this year. The city has endured coastal abrasion, flooding, rising sea levels, land subsidence due to continuous groundwater extractions, as well as unresolved problems with industrial and household waste. Of the world's major cities, Jakarta is among those predicted to sink the fastest, at 17 cm a year. It is estimated that by 2050, one-third of Jakarta will be under sea level. Jakarta is not alone in this. Cities such as Bangkok, Ho Chi Minh City, Shanghai, Venice, and Rotterdam also face the same problems. In each of these cases, governments are competing to save their cities from drowning with extremely expensive projects, acting as if they were God, even though the reality is that ecological destructions and environmental degradation cannot be avoided. These expensive projects are only able to buy more time. At a local scale, the Jakarta Bay provides a specific site through which many of the planetary concerns and themes in Tita Salina and Irwan Ahmad's work are sedimented. In fact, much of it can be traced to Tita's 1001 island, the most sustainable island in the archipelago, the artist's first solo work made in 2015. The 1001 island is made from one ton of plastic collected from the Jakarta Bay, and the title refers to what tourists call the Kepulauan Seribu, or Thousand Islands dotted across the bay. In reality, there are about 110 islands here, but the work can be read as a metaphor for the environmental pollution and governmental corruption that afflicts the larger Indonesian archipelago as well as a microcosm of the planetary ecological emergencies. Between climate and primate, between existence and extinction, between Tanah and Ai. The Indonesian government's massive plan in 2014 to redevelop Jakarta Bay includes filling the sea with reclaimed sand to create a group of 17 artificial luxury islands as part of the giant seawall mega project, ostensibly to future-proof Jakarta from floods. The paradox of this project, besides posing a significant threat to the livelihoods of many coastal and urban communities in North Jakarta, is that seven islands in the Thousand Islands cluster have already sunk and disappeared due to rising sea levels. The islands include Ubi Basar, Ubi Kecil, Nirwana, Dapur, Payung Kecil, Air Kecil, and Nyamuk Kecil. In a recent online lecture, Tita Salina presented and reflected on her very own constellation of lost, forgotten and stigmatised islands. A personal and ghostly archipelago. An archipelago ghost. Tita included some of the islands that are now lost in Jakarta Bay. Sunken and absent islands that she and Irwan have attempted to identify, locate and resuscitate, but which now only exist as names and outdated maps. In the endless, timeless friction between Tanah and Air. Air appears always to come up on top. In Tita's imagined archipelago, she also includes the 1001 Island, a woman-made island of plastic, trash and waste, offering us a paradoxical but powerful vision of a utopian and dystopian Tanah Air. The sea has only been seen as a commodity and regional and national borders are not only maintained but celebrated without a care for what is contained by these borders or the humans who depend on the sea for their livelihoods. Jakarta Bay is black, smelly and full of pollution. The sea, a giant trash bin. There is a popular phrase, Kelaut aja lo, literally translated as just go to the sea, but the real meaning is closer to Go fuck yourself. This further affirms our attitude that the sea is just a wasteland and meaningless place. In general, maritime matters in the archipelago always privilege the perspective of the land. The meaning of archipelago should be a sea country sprinkled with islands, not an archipelago surrounded by sea. <laughs>